As we've been working with these exponential growth equations, you might have noticed we have not yet asked the question, how do we solve for the exponent? How do we solve, or better said, how do we solve an exponential? for time. How do we solve for the exponent? And the short answer for how we solve for an exponent is we use a special function called a logarithm. What a logarithm is is really just an exponential function rewritten. It's a way that we rewrite the exponent. The idea here is we'll have some base raised to some exponent that's going to be equal to some answer. And what we can do is we can rewrite this exponential problem, b to the x equals a, as a log function where the base becomes a little subscript. And the answer goes inside the log, and it's going to be equal to an exponent. This is really two ways to write the exact same problem. But what it does is it gets the exponent out of the exponent so that we can actually solve for x and figure out what it is. So if I had a problem like 5 raised to the third power, which we know is equal to 125, we could rewrite that exact same problem with a log. The base of the problem is 5. The answer of the problem is 125. And the log will always equal the exponent of 3. So log base 5 of 125 then must equal 3. And we can go the other direction, too. I could start with a log problem, maybe a log base 2 of 8, which if you were to work that out, you'd find out it equals 3. And the way we know that's true is we rewrite it as an exponential problem. The base of the log is 2. The base of the exponential is 2. The exponent is what the log equals, 2 to the third power equals, the answer is what's inside of the log, the 8. And so we can switch back and forth between what we'll call log form and exponential form in order to uh, get that exponent out of the exponent if we need to solve for it. Now, there's a lot to do with logarithms. And in this course, we're just going to barely touch the surface because it's not the focus of our course. But we do need to know how to work with them, at least on an introductory level. There's two special logs and one special property that we're going to use in this course. The first special log is called the common logarithm. And that's the logarithm that works in base 10. It's used a lot in science applications because of scientific notation having times 10 raised to some exponent. And so if the way it works, very similar to what we did up above. In fact, I'll match the colors here. When we have a base of 10 raised to some exponent that's equal to some answer, we can still convert that into a logarithm, but it's going to look a little bit different. Normally, we would write log base 10. But because the base 10 is so common, we're going to become lazy and not write the common base 10. And so we'll just write log of a equals the exponent of x. Whenever we see no base written, we will assume that base is 10. So if I was trying to solve for an exponent in the problem 10 to the x is equal to 47, I can rewrite that as a log. We don't have to write the base because it's the common base. So we'll say it's the log of 47 is equal to the exponent of x. 
And what's nice about having log 47 is on our calculators, there is a log button. If you look on your calculator, there's a button that says LOG with no base written. That no base written tells us it's a common log. So we can actually type in our calculator log of 47, and we find out that the answer is 1.672. And if I test that by plugging it into our problem, 10 raised to the x, which we now know is 1.672. And that is rounded. But when we calculate it, it comes out to approximately 47. And if we didn't round it, it would come out to exactly 47. So that's the common log. It's nice because there's a button on our calculator that will figure out what that exponent is equal to with base 10. There's another log that we use a lot. And in fact, we use it more often in math because it's so versatile. And that's the natural log. The natural logarithm uses what we call base e. e is a number kind of like pi. It's a decimal that goes on forever, has no pattern or repetition. It's approximately 2.72, but not exactly. But it comes up a lot in various applications, especially in business, finance, nature, science, and population growth. The natural logarithm of base e, we'll just always use that e as our base, raised to some exponent can equal some answer. Well, if I want to convert this to log form, we would normally write log base e. But because that base e gets used a lot, we're going to take a shortcut and we're going to write ln. That stands for log natural. That tells me the base is already e. So I don't have to write the base e. We just write the answer. And then it's equal to the exponent of x. And so when I've got a problem like e to the x power is equal to 7, I can solve this quickly by changing it into a log. And because it's base e, instead of writing base e, we'll write natural log of the answer 7 is equal to the exponent of x. And what you'll notice is if you look at your calculator right next to the log button, which was base 10, you'll also see an ln button. And that ln is the natural log. And if you type in the natural log of 7, you'll get 1.9459 approximately. And so again, if we check that e to our new exponent of 1.9459 is approximately equal to 7. Now, we rounded, so it's going to be close. If we didn't round, it would be exactly 7. So two logs that we have buttons on our calculator for, which are nice, base 10 and base e. And because we have those buttons on our calculator, we'll use those more often than any other log. All right, quick introduction to logs. Now we're ready to actually do what we said we wanted to do, which is to solve for the exponent. First, starting with a process. The first thing we do as we try and solve a problem where the variable is in the exponent is we isolate the part with the exponent. Once the part with the exponent is all alone, we can take the log of both sides. And in fact, we could do a log, or we can do a natural log of both sides. And in fact, I always prefer the natural log. You can do the log if you want. It's just a different button on your calculator. When we take the log of both sides, we will use an important property of logarithms, 
Logs have lots of properties, which you can take a pre-calculus class if you want to see all the logs. But the property that I want to use is if we have log of any base of some number raised to an exponent, that exponent inside the log can come out front. And so this ends up being equal to the exponent times the log base b of m. So we can move that exponent out front as a product. Exponents inside logs move out. That's an important property. We'll use that on every single problem, because then it makes it into something we can solve. It's probably easiest to see it actually work out in some real problems. So let's try and do some problems. Some examples. Let's start off with 3 to the x equals 12. Normally, we'd want to isolate the part with the exponent, but the part with the exponent is already isolated, 3 to the x. And so once that's isolated, we'll take the log of both sides. I personally prefer the natural log, so I'm going to do the natural log of both sides, which allows us to take the exponent and move it out front. When I do that, we have x times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 12. And I always like to put those numbers in parentheses to show that they're inside the log. That's going to be helpful when I get to the calculator. Now we can get the x alone. Solving right now, it's x times the log. We'll divide both sides then by the natural log of 3. And when I do that, we get x is equal to the natural log of 12 divided by the natural log of 3. And that I can do on my calculator. As I do it on my calculator, be very careful. Most of the time when you type in the natural log button, it will open a parentheses. Type in the 12 and then make sure you close the parentheses. If you forget to close the parentheses, it'll give you the wrong answer. What you should get is about 2.262 when we round. So now we know 3 to the 2.262 power must equal 12. Let's try another example. Let's do e to the 2x equals 10. This one's nice also because the part with the exponent is already alone. So we don't actually have to do step one. We're ready for step two, which says we can take the natural log of both sides. When we take the natural log of both sides, the exponent will always move out front, which gives us 2x times the natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 10. And one nice thing about the natural log of e, if you type that into your calculator, you'll find the natural log of e is equal to 1. And 1 times 2x is just 2x. So I can kind of get rid of that piece. The natural log of e is just 1. So I really have 2x equals the natural log of 10. And so when I divide both sides by 2, I get x is equal to the natural log of 10 divided by 2. Remembering to put that 10 in parentheses, open and closed, before we divide by the 2. And when I do, I find out that x is equal to 1.151. Let's try another example. Let's do 3 times 5 to the x equals 42. This time, 5 to the x is our exponential part, but we have a 3 times in front. So it needs to be isolated. So we first clear out the 3 by dividing by 3 on both sides. So we have 5 to the x is equal to 42 divided by 3 is 14. And now that exponential is all alone so that we can take the natural log of both sides which pulls the exponent 
out front. We now have x natural log of 5 equals the natural log of 14. Again, we can get the x alone by dividing off the natural log of 5 from both sides. And we're left with x equals the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of 5. Again, being careful with parentheses as I type it in my calculator, we find out the exponent we're looking for is 1.640. Let's try another example. Let's do 4e to the x is equal to 64. Again, the exponent part is e to the x. So right now, it's with a times 4. So we have to get rid of that times 4 before we do anything with logs by dividing out the 4. And 64 divided by 4 is 16. Now we're ready to take the natural log of both sides. When we do, the exponent moves out front. And we get x natural log of e equals the natural log of 16. But again, we see this natural log of e. Remember, that one's really nice, because we know the natural log of e is 1. And 1 times x is just x. So x is equal to the natural log of 16. And that I can type in my calculator really quick to get 2.773 for my value of x. Let's complicate these formulas a little bit more. Let's try 6 minus 5 times 2 to the x equals negative 30. Now we got quite a bit going on here. 2 to the x is the exponential that we're solving for. We need to get rid of the positive 6 and the multiplication by negative 5. Just like we would solve a two-step equation, we get rid of the positive 6 first with a negative 6, which gives us negative 5 times the 2 to the x that we're 1 alone equals negative 36. Dividing both sides by negative 5. And now our 2 to the x is alone is equal to, it's a fraction. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, 36 over 5. Just because it's a fraction, though, it's still going to work the same way. We'll still take the natural log of both sides so we can pull that exponent out in front giving us x natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of 36 over 5. And now, just like all the previous problems, we get rid of multiply by natural log by dividing both sides by the natural log of 2. When we do that, we get x is equal to the natural log of 36 divided by 5 over the natural log of 2. And again, being careful with my parentheses as I type it in, we should end up with a final answer that x is equal to 2.848. Let's do one last example before we tie back to our exponential growth models. Let's do 5 plus 2e to the 3x equals 17. Again, the exponential part needs to be alone before I can do any logs. First, we get rid of the positive 5 with a negative 5. So we have 2e to the 3x, that's the exponential we're looking for, equals 12. Divide both sides by 2, which leaves us with e to the 3x, the exponential we're looking for, equals 6. And now the exponential is alone. We'll take the natural log of both sides, which allows that exponent to move out front. So we have 3x 
natural log of e equals the natural log of 6. And again, we see that natural log of e, which we know equals 1. So we can ignore it, because 1 times 3x is just 3x. And we get the x alone by dividing by 3. So x is the natural log of 6 divided by 3. We can't reduce. The 6 over 3 does not reduce. Logs don't work that way. Just put it in your calculator, the natural log of 6 divided by 3, and you should get 0 0.597 for your final answer. All right, this has been a real fast introduction to logs. We're just barely touching the surface. But that surface is all we really need in order to solve exponentials for time. Quite often, we have an exponential relationship. And the big question is, how long until we reach a certain point? Let's say a town with 35,000 people is growing at 7% per year. And we want to know how long until the population reaches 50,000. We found out in our previous video that we can set up an explicit formula, p sub n equals 1 plus the rate raised to the exponent times the initial value. So our formula is going to be 1 plus the rate, which is 7% as a decimal, 0.07 to the n, times the initial value, which is 35,000 people. Or let's go ahead and do the math in the parentheses, 1.07 to the n times 35,000. And we want to know when that final population is going to reach 50,000. What we end up with when we do this is an exponential function where we're trying to solve for the number of years in the exponent. Well, that exponent currently is attached to the 1.07. So we need to isolate that by dividing both sides by 35,000. When we divide by 35,000, it's not a pretty number, but I'll do the easy reducing by dividing out the zeros. So I'm just left with 50 over 35. And since we're going to use our calculator anyways, let's just leave that as an unreduced fraction equals 1.07 to the n. Now that it's alone, doing what we did in our last uh, set of exercises, is we'll take the natural log of both sides which grabs the exponent and moves it out front. So the natural log of 50 over 35 is equal to n times the natural log of 1.07. Dividing both sides by the natural log of 1.07 tells us that the number of years is the natural log of 50 over 35 divided by the natural log of 1.07, which we can put on our calculator, being careful with the parentheses, to get 5.27 years, approximately, for our amount of time. Let's try one more example so we can practice applying this solving for the exponent. Let's say you have an investment of 
of $8,000 that loses 12% of its value each year. This is a bad investment. You want to know how long until it is worth half its value. Again, we know 1 plus r to the n times the initial value is the explicit formula. Plugging in what we know for the final value, we want it to be half what it started at. Well, if it started at 8,000, half of that is going to be 4,000. Is equal to 1 plus the rate. It loses 12% which means it's going down, subtracting 0.12 to the n times the initial value the account started at 8,000. So if we do that subtraction, what we really have is 4,000 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.12 is 0.88 to the n times 8,000. Now, just like all the problems we've seen, the process should flow from here nicely, dividing by the 8,000. So the exponent part is alone. I know that left fraction is 1 half, or you could put 0 0.5. 0.88 to the n. Now that the exponent is alone, we'll take the natural log of both sides, which allows us to grab that exponent and pull it out front. So we have the natural log of 1 half is equal to n times the natural log of 0.88. Solve by dividing by the natural log of 0.88. And if I'm careful with my parentheses, as I type that into my calculator, the natural log of 1 half divided by the natural log of 0.88, we end up with 5.42 years is when this account will be worth half of its value. So the big new thing we're doing now is we're solving exponentials for that exponent. Usually that exponent represents time. We know we can do that by first isolating the exponent part, taking the log of both sides, and then the exponent moves out front. Try these on the homework. Let me know if you have any questions. And in our next video, we'll take a look at one additional type of growth that we still have not yet considered.